Okay, the app again closed on me, so I'm gonna have to re-record this one, but it should go a bit a little bit faster, I guess, now that I have everything written down. So module 33 is a continuation of the rational functions, but they do take us back to the transformings of graphs, okay? So they give me here in blue and my red asymptote there, and that's what they started off with. And they said below is the graph of y equals one over x squared, and transform it to turn it into this graph. So the first thing you need to do is your horizontal and vertical uh, shifting or translating, then do the stretching or the shrinking, okay? So the first thing that I have to do here is shift it down. Um, actually, you're supposed to do stretch before you shift down. So we have to stretch first. So I took the Y values, I took this point here and this point here. Coordinates of this point are negative 1 and positive 1, which is that dot there. Coordinates of this point here is 1 and 1, so that's the coordinates there. The stretching will cause me to multiply my y values by 2, which is what I've done here. Then the shifting horizontal, or I'm sorry, vertical shift me to decrease my y values by 4. So I took away 4 here, ended up with negative 2. Took away 4 here, ended up with negative 2. But since I am shifting downward, that means my horizontal asymptote also has to shift downward 4. And then I can plot that point, negative 1, negative 2, 1, and negative 2. And you'll notice that because of the stretching, notice how close my points were to my asymptote here. But on my graph, my um, points are a little bit further away from my asymptote because of that shifting, okay? Um, and I think I actually drew it one, two, three, four. I drew it a little bit too far down. The horizontal asymptote should have been here at negative four. And so then the graph should have gone in direction in that direction there we go now the bottom one says transforms 1 over x so this blue and red was the original so I took this coordinate here which was negative 1 negative 1 I took the coordinates for this point here which is 1 and 1 this is a horizontal shift which means it's gonna go left or right because it's a plus 2 I had to minus 2 from my x values to make them shift left or right. And then for the horizontal shift, I had to add four to my Y values. Now, the, the asymptotes will also do these shiftings. So this was my vertical asymptote, but because it had to shift to the left two, my vertical asymptote is now here at negative two. My horizontal asymptote was at zero because it shifted up four. Now the vertical asymptote has to be at positive four. And then my point should now be at negative one and five, or no, I'm sorry, negative one and five, and then negative three and three. And so then the graph is still in the same manner. I'm still pretty close to my asymptotes because there was no um, stretching going on. Now they want us to graph rational functions. And so it's the same process. You're going to find your vertical asymptote which helps you get the chart and then compare your degrees to figure out whether you have a horizontal or a slant, excuse me, asymptote. So my denominator equal to zero, I added four over divided by negative two, I ended up with negative two. So I drew the asymptote at negative two. Here the degree of the numerator is two, the degree of the denominator is one. Two is bigger than one by one only. So I did have to do the long division in order to figure out what my asymptote was going to look like, a slant asymptote. So I ended up with negative one half minus four. Um, and then to graph that, I had to go to my negative four asymptote, put a dotted line, and then go down one and over two, down one and over two to get a couple more points on that asymptote. And then in Alex, you just hit the dotted line and it'll draw that slanted line for you. Okay. Um, and then I filled in my chart with two numbers to the left of negative two, negative three and negative four, and then two um, x values to the right of negative two, which is negative one and zero. 
when I plugged all of these into this equation, the calculator gave me these numbers, which are these numbers in decimals. I plotted all of those numbers here. So negative 3, negative 9, negative 4, negative 5.5. Um, negative 1 and 3.5 and then 0 and negative 0.5 and if you hit the graphing button it'll graph the lines for you just have to remember this is going to go upward and this is going to trail off to the asymptote this one's going to go downward and that one's going to trail off toward the asymptote okay but if you just hit the graphing button it does it for you now here's the same thing so I took my denominator equal it to 0 I got negative 1 Pick two numbers to the left of negative 1, two numbers to the right of negative 1, plug them all into the function, got these y values. Then I went over here to get the horizontal asymptote. So the degree of the numerator is 2, the degree of the denominator is 1. So we did long division here. We don't care about the remainder, only the quotient is what we need. So 2x plus 4. So we went up four, that's the y-intercept, so we put a dotted line there, or a dashed line there. For you, I think you have to put a point, and then you have to go up two and over one, up two and over one. Once you have a couple of points, you can hit the dotted line, and it'll graph that dotted line for you. And then once you hit, once you have the points and the asymptotes, you just hit the graphing func button, and it'll graph it for you. For me, I'm gonna have to actually physically draw this in here. But for you, the graphing button will draw the graph. Okay, now this is something new. This is rational functions with holes, okay? So the graph of this is going to look exactly like another graph, except it's going to have a hole. If you want to know what it's going to look like, all you need to do is factor... is factor this graph, and then the factor that cancels is where your hole is at. So looking at the original function, you automatically know that you have a vertical asymptote at x equals two, okay? So, and actually there is no vertical asymptote because you look at the vertical asymptote after you've simplified, okay? So h of x, is going to look like x plus 5, but it's going to have a hole where x plus 2 equals 0, so where x equals to negative 2, okay? And if you were to try to plug in negative 2 into this function, you're going to get undefined, okay? So that means I need to graph this, but I'm going to have a hole here, okay? So that's just the line. I can graph a line pretty easily without having to do anything crazy. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's this value, and then my slope is a 1, so I'm going to go up 1 and over 1, up 1 and over 1, up 1 and over 1, right? Am I doing that correctly? No, I'm off a little bit. One, two, three. So up one and over one, up one, over one. And so then you can draw this line here, but at negative two, there's supposed to be a hole. What do I get when I plug in negative two here? Negative two plus five is three. So there will be a hole here at three. So you can draw the line, but then in Alex, you want to make sure you grab the icon that has a hole and then put the hole right there at negative 2 and 3. Okay, this one here, if I simplify it, I'm going to factor out a negative 3. I get x plus 5, x plus 5, which means f of x looks like... Three, negative three. Well, negative three is a horizontal line. So one, two, three, and this is the graph. But it's gonna have a hole when 
that denominator or that factor that I canceled equals zero, which means at negative five. So one, two, three, four, five, right here, you're going to have a hole. There's some more to get a little bit more complicated, right? Of course. So let's factor this. I'm going to factor out negative 2x. So this cancels. So then my function is going to look like negative 2x over x plus 2 with a hole at if I make that equal to zero, I'm gonna get negative four for x, right? <clears throat> so now this is a little bit more complicated to draw, right? We know our vertical asymptote is gonna be at x plus two equal to zero, or when x is equal to negative two. We know that the degree, and I can make a chart here, right? Pick two numbers to the left. Oh, I can't pick negative four. <clears throat> well, I can, but I just have to remember that there's a hole here. And then 2 to the right, which would be negative 1 and 0. And all of these are going to get plugged into this because this is what I'm graphing. I'm not graphing the original. I'm graphing this. This is going to look exactly the same. It's just here I'm going to have a hole because x is negative 4. So the degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is also 2. And they're the same. So my, I, why, my horizontal asymptote is going to be at negative 2 coefficient of the numerator over 1, which is the coefficient of the denominator. So let me program my calculator. Now this is what I'm plugging the numbers into, not the original. So let's do negative 3 stores x, and then do negative 2x over x plus 2. I get negative 6, negative four store x, plug it in, I get negative four, negative one store x, I'm going to plug it in, I get two, zero store x, should get zero, yep. And so now we're going to graph it. So at negative two, one, two, we have this horizontal asymptote, three, four, five. Okay, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, we're gonna have to do this smaller. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so plotting my horizontal, my vertical asymptote, my horizontal asymptote would be at y equal to negative two. Then my points, negative three and negative six, negative four and negative four, but I have a hole there. And then negative two or negative one and two, and then zero, zero. So this is fine. You have to graph this exactly. You graph your vertical asymptote, graph your horizontal asymptote, graph these three points. Then graph the icon that has a hole and put the hole here at negative 4, negative 4. Once you get the graphing icon, it'll draw it for you. Now similarly, we're going to do this one. So factor out a negative 2. So then mine is going to look like negative 2 over minus 2 with a hole at, if I set that equal to 0, I get x equal to positive 4. So my vertical asymptote happens when the denominator equals 0, which is 2. If I fill in my chart, I have to pick two numbers to the left, like, zero, like 1 and, yeah, 1 and 0 and then two to the right, like two and four. But remember, this is a hole here. So don't forget when you plot that point to use the hole button in Alex. Then the degree of the numerator is equal to zero. The degree of the denominator is equal to one. 
that means it's less, which means the horizontal asymptote is automatically at y equals zero. Now when I plug in one, I'm gonna get positive one. No, I'm gonna get one minus two is negative one, so I'm gonna get positive two. When I plug in zero, I'm gonna get positive one. When I plug in two, oh, I have a hole there to pick numbers to the right of two, which is three and four. When I plug in three, I get negative two over one, which is negative one. When I plug in four, negative two over two, which is negative one. Oh, this one should be negative two. Three minus one, yeah, negative two. So then now let's draw that. So we have um, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals two. And then we have the points one and two, zero and one, three and negative two, four and negative one, but that one's got a hole. And then you hit the graphing function in Alex and it'll draw your parabola for you. And so we end up with this image here. Okay, now we have three more, or yeah, three more topics. So I'll stop the video here and then record another one in a second.